Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I wanted to thank you for joining us for the Better Approaches to Options American Style um, Options Pricing Webinar. I'm Maria Weiss with Option Cities Business Development, and I wanted everyone to be aware of the disclaimer. Please just read it at your will. We are not giving investment advice. It's my pleasure to introduce today's presenter, David Rensessen. He is our Director of Quantitative Analytics at Option City. Thank you. So I guess I'll get started. Thank you, Maria. So uh, what we're going to talk about is uh, a couple different models that we have implemented and why we would choose those. Just as a quick overview, we'll talk about the decision process be behind choosing a model, and then the two models that we have right now that we recommend for fast pricing and quoting, namely the Whaley model and the Xu Zhang model. And uh, then we will also uh, just show a little bit more pricing comparison after the overview in the front. So let's start with how we might choose a model for our purposes. So if we're doing risk management, will be more concerned about the market dynamics, what, uh, how well a model actually portrays and conveys what will happen with a particular instrument over the course of time, and speed is less important. So you might use a very uh, computationally intensive approach to make sure that you're not just taking a simple Black-Scholes framework, log-normal model, that you're doing a lot more, maybe stochastic fall and what have you. As far as trading and quoting purposes, though, that may not be paramount importance. What's generally more important is that we have a very fast model that you can work with, that it's robust, works across a wide range of market inputs, and uh, also that it's accurate for what it's supposed to try and do. So let's look at some put pricing, and uh, what we've got is a comparison of a couple different models, and just to first highlight here, as a benchmark, we took a tree with, say, 10,000 steps in it to get an idea of what the price would be over the course of a wide range of inputs for puts. So we just stuck with a spot of 40 strikes ranging from in the money to out of the money, and mostly short dated options, one month, four months, seven months, and then took a look at a couple models. Jay-Z for the Chu Zhang model, the Bjerks and Stenslin models as a matter of comparison, and the Whaley model, and priced every single one of those and calculated errors against the benchmark. One thing to note is that the Whaley model and the Chu Zhang models both did fairly well in uh, general performance. On average, the errors for the Whaley were on the order of one to one and a half ticks, and in the case of the Chuchong, it was about twice as good with only about a half a tick. And the worst case was one and a half ticks for Chuchong versus Whaley at three. Now, uh, here. So just as a matter of a visualization, you can see the uh, Chu Shang and the Whaley and then the Bjergsen Stenslins. I'm not talking about, in the course of this talk, those two other models, but it's just an example of a couple other models that are known in uh, trading and uh, I think this is illustrative as to why we're not all that concerned about having that implemented or wouldn't necessarily suggest it. So the thing to note here again is that the Whaley model and the Zhang model are generally not too bad as far as uh, performance. The Zhang model tends to do, in the case that we've done here, slightly better than the Whaley. As the numbers showed, it always helps to have some visualization as well. Likewise, some call prices. Same thing to note that on average for calls, Chu Shang was about twice as good as Whaley, and uh, again, 
Bjerks and Stensland uh, as possible alternatives were not remarkably better. In fact, Chu Zhang was an outperformer in all cases. So let's take a look at these two models, the Whaley and the Chu Zhang model, for, uh, in terms of trying to understand how they're built and uh, how they're related. Now, bear in mind, I'm going to show a lot of formulas, but the point isn't that you're going to actually understand or memorize or really learn the formulas. They'll be up there for history if you want to view the webinar again. You can take a look at those, and I'll also give you references that uh, you can take a look at as far as uh, the papers, the original papers. So the main thing I want to focus on is how they're built in a overview sense and how they're related as well. And that's what I'll focus on. So first of all, the building blocks for the log normal price dynamics, the Black-Scholes model, we all should be fairly familiar with this, so it's just a matter of uh, formality. I'll put that up there for you. That is the European pricing model that is typically applied for log normal cases. And the Whaley is built off of that given this general assumption. So if we have log normal assumptions, Merton showed that any option, contingent claim is maybe the mathematical term for it or what have you, the American European options that would be priced in that framework will satisfy this PDE. And what Whaley did, and Macmillan's approach originally, was to take that formula and use it for adding on to the Black-Scholes model and early exercise premium. So basically, the Whaley model is very straightforward. You take the Black-Scholes model and you add an early exercise premium. Slight more involved there, but we'll get to that. And in that case, the early exercise, let me uh, highlight here just to draw. Hello. The early exercise premium will be a solution of this PDE. All right, so here's a transformation. They take that PDE, they take time and reverse it from instead of just being a linear time, it's time to expiration. They take the rate and the carry or the dividend and they convert those into volatility and uh, carry and rate terms. And they take the discount factor and convert it into this H. And they come up with a solution that the early exercise premium is H times a function G that satisfies this equation, which is simply a transformation of the Merton formula. Then, taking a look at that PDE, if you are fairly comfortable with PDEs, you'll note that this portion, this front portion, is actually a very straightforward formula. It's a second order PDE, one of the first that you learn in class how to solve, and Whaley takes that and uses that as their formula and assumes the other part is zero. So that last portion in the PDE being zero works okay for short maturities and for extremely long maturities for various reasons. In the case of the long maturities, one minus H, which is just one minus one minus the discount factor, is gonna be very close to zero. And uh, likewise. Now what that gives you Okay, what that gives you is a solution that's simply of the form of constant times a power function. So S being the spot is raised to a power which is just called lambda for now. And here is the next step. So when you've got a system of a differential equation, you need to somehow lock down the formula that you solve for with boundary value conditions, with initial conditions, if you're just simple one variable formulas. And in the case of the Whaley and other American models, uh, solutions, you 
need to come up with some extra conditions to solve for to get this formula. And in the case of uh, this formula, what we're going to do is solve for what's known as a critical underlying price. And that is essentially the location in the underlying for a given strike where it's cheaper, to, it's, it's more beneficial to actually hold the option on one side and then on the other side you should exercise. Of course that's one property of American options and so in the analytic solution we're going to find a S star which is exactly that perfect exercise point. Now let's take a look at the sort of visualization of this. All right, so what we've got is a payout here. We've got the Black-Scholes analytic, which crosses through the payout value, and we have the Whaley model, which actually has a little bit of extra early exercise premium. And at this point here, the Whaley model intersects the payout. And perhaps it might be easier to look at this second uh, diagram where the early exercise premium occurs here. And basically what we've done there is subtracted out the payout and we're left just looking at the early exercise value. So the Black-Scholes model actually goes negative and the Whaley model intersects the zero value at that critical point. And that's essentially solvable when you look at, on the left side of the formula, the Whaley formula, Black-Scholes value at that S star plus the early exercise premium at that X star, S star needs to be the same value as the payout. And we solve this formula. We get a form which is basically Black-Scholes plus early exercise premium and it's basically S to a power and then all the rest A and S star are constants. So it's just basically the form that I mentioned before. Now, um, we don't need to worry about how A, you know, what, what's the structure of A, what's the structure of lambda, so we're just going to talk about this A, this S to the power function, just in, in very loose terms. All right. Now, Ju and Chong, they took the same approach as Whaley, but instead of using only part of the PDE, getting rid of that extra troublesome term, they decided to add that correction term and treat it as essentially Whaley is European exercise plus American premium, and the Xu Zhong model is Whaley model plus a correction for where they were taking shortcuts. And if you take G2 as that correction and add it to G1, then you've got two formulas. One is the original Whaley formula, and the second is an additional error correction term, where the first one is the Whaley formula, and the second one is the Xu Zhang correction. And that gives another form it's actually very similar to the Whaley solution where we've got this extra epsilon, this e extra um, term here multiplied by the early exercise premium of Whaley. And this A and this lambda and this S star turn out to be exactly the same as the Whaley A, lambda, and S star. There's just an extra H over 1 minus chi in their solution. So let's take a look at the model. Um, one of the things that we talked about with Whaley was that Whaley was a good approximation for very short dated pricing and for extremely long dated pricing. But as it turns out, in the intermediate, 
the uh, sort of one to three year price range for timed expiration, Chu Zhang actually does a better job. So let's take a look at a little bit, instead of just how does it perform versus a benchmark, how does it perform in spreads? And that kind of brings out the price sort of microstructure of the model. So this is a plot of the theoretical value according to the Whaley model, the Chu Zhang model, and the Black Shoals tree used as a benchmark at 10,000 uh, price points, uh, steps in the tree. And uh, one of the things to note that this is only a 10-day option with reasonably you know, 20% fall is that they're all pretty close to 10, but there's a little bit of early exercise premium, and Whaley does a reasonably smooth job, whereas Chu Zhang is a little bit erratic. And that actually I'll get back to in a little bit. Let's take a look at a half a year, and at this point already, Chu Zhang looks to be a lot tighter to the red curve, the Black Shoals tree, and Whaley starts to kind of pull away in terms of performance. And then at two years, we've almost got a lock between the Chu Zhang approximation and the tree for a box uh, spread. Now this is a call and a put and a call and a put, so there's four options spread spread against each other, and uh, so this is a very good indication of the pricing performance of the models. So bearing in mind, for maybe short dated stuff, you might choose Whaley, and for longer dated, you might choose Xu Zhang. And that's, and in summary, what I might suggest is that you could consider, depending on what you're trading, one model over another, depending on uh, what your portfolio and where your risk is. Now, I said I'd get back to that uh, um, waviness in the Xu Zhang model. What ends up happening is if you look at the formula, this chi here can get close to one. And for shorter dated, low vol situations, that actually can cause this additional term, instead of being incrementally small, to be very large. And uh, so there can be a point at which the Xu Zhang model will be unstable. and. Uh, so one of the recommendations, and this is something that we're actually developing, is a hybrid model that might switch in the short dated stuff from Whaley to longer dated pricing using Xu Chong. And if that pretty much sums up uh, the description of the two models, how they're compared, when you might choose one over the other, and what you might, um, what you might uh, look at when you are making your decisions, I've uh, included some references that uh, are links, or not links, but uh, the actual references to the papers for the Whaley model and the Xu Chang model. If anyone wants copies, then uh, feel free to contact us, maybe via Maria, and uh, um, we'll be happy to send those on to you. And uh, at this point, we can uh, answer some questions. And uh, I see there's already a couple questions here. Um, uh, one question really quick. The Whaley model is not the same model as the Whaley of Vic's fame, but it is the same Whaley as in the uh, um, mathematician. Um, so I'll just, OK. Are there issues with Whaley? and the Xu Zhang model regarding discrete dividends. We actually do not have an implementation of uh, discrete dividends on top of Whaley or Xu Zhang. There are actually some approximation approaches for that, um, which we could consider. I haven't put anything in there. What we have for that as an alternative is a black tree, which actually explicitly puts in the dynamics of discrete dividends. So uh, I would recommend that you use that. It's a little bit slower in terms of pricing performance and speed, but uh, we do work uh, our system to um, mitigate that with the way that we've implemented our models. 
Okay, uh, that's another question. Um, are there any implications uh, for calendar spreads potentially involving both pricing models at once? Um, for the most part, the, the two models are trying to solve the same dynamics. And so um, I don't have direct experience with calendar spreads involving, say, a hybrid. So I can't speak to that. But what I would say is, is that if at one point the dynamics are being well approximated, and then for a different duration they're also being reasonably approximated, that uh, um, I, I'm not aware of any problems that might occur with that. That's a question that uh, I think would be interesting for us to look at when we're working on our hybrid. Okay, Greeks. How do Greeks compare between Whaley and Shuchong? They're uh, fairly similar. Um, the formulas for both uh, delta and gamma in Whaley and for Shuchong are both analytic and uh, because the early exercise value, that, that critical point, S star, is the same between the two models, the Greeks actually are reasonably good. I had thought that I should uh, um, put some Greek slides up. I think it would have been useful to put a gamma slide in there so that you could see there is some amount of a drop off. One thing that uh, I probably should remark on, just to go back, is that when you solve for the critical price, what happens is Whaley and Xu Zhang use the formula, V, the Black-Scholes price, and then the early exercise price, in this case for a call, to the left of that early exercise premium. But once you get to the right, it replaces those two forms with the payout function. So there is, in the Greeks, in gamma in particular, a bit of a discrete drop, uh, where gamma will, on one side, have some curvature, and on the other side, it's zero. Um, they compare very similarly in terms of that property. I believe, in, from what I've looked at, um, the Greeks compare much better to a benchmark model, say uh, 10,000 steps in a tree for Xu Zhang than Whaley. Uh, gamma tends to be um, a little bit higher for the Whaley model in the cases where Whaley's not so um, good at performing. Um, all right. I think uh, that's pretty much all the questions. I've got one more question and uh, um, it's a question on calibrating the model and really, I mean, what do you use to calibrate any model? You use the market data to fit a volatility to uh, the market prices. So uh, I think that's, uh, there really isn't any kind of uh, calibration for Lambda, for example. All we're really doing in the course of solving is finding that critical point and then once we find the critical point, the model is spelled out for you, and that critical point is solved for using a root solver like newton raphson method or, or what have you. And then once you've done that, then you can calibrate the model by having a volatility that will fit the market for your purposes. So that's uh, all the questions that we've got and uh, pretty much the time. Um, let me put up the last slide for you so you have some contact information. Let's just jump. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, give us a ring, send us an email. Um, I hope this was helpful, and I hope I helped you to understand how these models actually work and how they compare a little bit better so that you can make uh, better decisions as to which model you might choose to use. So I wanted to thank everyone for attending our webinar on better approaches to American style options pricing. And as Dave had mentioned, please uh, contact either of us if you have any further questions and we'd be happy to um, send you more details. Um, and thank you for your time and thank you, David. Thank you.